Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. We are so excited to celebrate International Women's Day with you. And in today's episode, we bring you Yasmeen, the 13-year-old creator of Elven. She sold out her 6,000 randomly generated Elven girls in just four days. Wow. Let's do this. Hey, Jen FT, how are you today? I am so good. How are you? Happy International Women's Day. Yay! I'm so excited. And I love that we were able to spend some time with Yasmin today for International Women's Day because she is halfway around the world in Dubai and we are here in Puerto Rico and you know, we talk about it a little bit, but I just think it's really cool that we're able to connect with people all over the world. No kidding. And you know what? Like, talk about the future. I mean, we're talking about NFTs being the future, but she is the future and she yeah. is a female, a, fe a fierce female crushing it in the NFT space and just so excited to, to have the opportunity to talk to her. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And so speaking of females crushing it in the world, and we have a really super fun announcement to make today. Do you want to do the honors? I sure do. Okay. All right. So big announcement. The Nifty Chicks are going to be speaking at this year's NFT NYC event. It is huge. I'm so, so excited. excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. And you can see here, I love this, that it's the Super Bowl of NFTs. It totally is. I have been FOMOing for years to go to NFT NYC. And this is it. We're not just going, Jenna, Jen FT. We, we are speaking. Are speaking. I know. And it's going to be in Times Square. It's going to be so amazing. I yes. cannot wait to uh, not only be there, but to be a part of it. I mean, this is yeah. just killer. I know. It's so awesome. So for those of you that want to join us in New York this summer, we will be there. It is happening June 20th through 23rd. You can grab your tickets at nft.nyc. We would love to meet you and have you come support us on stage. Yes, we would. As many beautiful women out there that can join us, we would love, love, love that. Yes. So moving on, I did want to touch on this one piece of news that we found, and that is we kind of talk about it a little bit in the interview with Yasmin, uh, but Decentraland is going to host Metaverse Fashion Week with Tommy Hilfiger, Dolce & Cabana, and a bunch of other luxury fashion houses. So I thought that this was cool because Yasmin talks a little bit about her potential future in the fashion industry, and this goes right along with it. So that is happening, it looks like March 24th through 27th in Decentraland. What do you think about that, Gen FT? Yeah, I mean... I've said this before, but I think like everything can become an NFT and we'll see that over time and fashion being something like, how cool is it going to be to dress your avatar, right? right? Whatever metaverse you have, like yeah. I want my avatar looking good. And so I'm going to need some, some fashion uh, forward outfits there. And this is going to be an awesome opportunity to check it out. And there, there are so many things happening. In fact, we are going to have an upcoming uh, project, Diamond Handbags, and that is goes right along with this, that you, know, you can purchase and create your custom handbags to go with your couture. How cool is that? It's amazing. I, I know. Just love I, it. I, I love it. it. I mean, I I'm just... already I'm obsessed with fashion in real life, even though you wouldn't know it because I wear a lot of t-shirts, but like... How cool is it that I can be doubly obsessed? Right, I know. Spend I'm double the money. I'm so excited. I can wait. I can buy clothes. I can buy accessories. I can buy handbags. <laughs> I can buy shoes. Are you yep. kidding me? 
It's yeah, like it's gonna be fun. A dream come true. I'm already sensing, I'm already sensing some pain on my wallet. Actually. I know, me too, me too. So I think we should go ahead and get to the interview with Yasmin. And is there anything else that you want to throw in there before we do it? No. All no, right. I think that's it. Let's bring her in. Cool. All right, Yasmin, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you. I'm really excited to be on this show. You know, I, I love making your piece, obviously. It's like I've known, I know you from my server. So I'm um, excited about this too. Yeah. So I think what I want to start off with is kind of how we got connected. And uh, your project was actually one of the very first projects that I ever was interested in and minted. You're actually the second project I had ever minted. Um, and what drew me to your project was not only the artwork, which is amazing, but also your story and Thank the you. fact that you are the next generation stepping into this space. Um, so I would love to start with kind of a, a high level question of like, what was your experience stepping into the world of NFTs? Well, you know, when I first got into NFTs, I had no clue what it was. You know, it was something like really new, something I was like really confused about, like, what is it? Like now I really relate to that. Like when people say, what are NFTs? Like I can see why they're confused about it, how hard it's to explain. But if a family friend showed it to me, I was like, you know, here's an NFT, you should try and give it a go. And I'm like, you know, why not? It's something new. And it's something I think really cool, you know, to do as well. And like, it's a way of me being able to show my art in like a easy, I'll say easier way internationally, you know, like I can show it to multiple people around the world. Not like just where I live or where I, you know, in like what area. Because like, let's say if I was doing it in real life, you know, just showing my art in like, let's say, a mall, I would only show it to people who are living in that area. But with NFTs, I am to show it to people around the globe and make friends like that too. So I am not proud that I actually did it because I was first was like, it's really hard and everything. But now I'm like, I'm happy that I did it. And I'm like really proud of what I was able to achieve too. So yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I think one of the things that really excited me, so um, like you said, you're, you have the ability to uh, kind of share your art with the world. And you're actually located in Dubai, am I right? Yep. Yeah, so that's, and, and I like, actually, Minty Hill, and, yeah. and yeah. I, we're actually in Puerto Rico. So we are on very different time zones. And you, we developed a connection because, um, you know, I, I, I competed in a competition to win a custom Elvin, and uh, I ended up winning. And then we got connected on kind of what, I was looking for in my custom Elvin, and um, so I ended up sharing with you a headshot of mine, a very professional headshot of mine, and uh, you created the most incredible custom Elvin, and I literally have, I can say, like, I am recreated in an NFT, which is so, so cool. I love I it. Let's, love it. Let's show that. Look how cute that is. That's me. <laughs> um, so let's, um, can you just tell us a little bit about your process? In, in creating this custom Elven for sure. Jenna? So like first I would take the Elven template that I used for all my Elvins and like I took it and like put Gen NFTs like face on it. And it was like really fun drawing. Like, Jenna, it was like, also a really good experience. <laughs> you know, drawing some portraits as well, which was really fun. But, you know, I love adding like, you know, the long pointy ears. Like, I think they're really cute personally. Like I love adding them to customs. It's just really fun. I liked adding the wings. It was really cute. So like first I take the base and like draw the main sketch. Then I outline and make sure like everything's fine, like accurate. And then I would color it in with a similar color for the background. I went a bit, I would say planar because you know there's wings and everything. I didn't want to make like an overload of things. So like the wings and the pointy ears stand out. You like. I love making it. Like I love the cute wings and ears. It's just my favorite too. And it's so cute. We'll let we'll let Jen like, Jen come back on. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. That's amazing. So tell me about your journey as an artist. So um, you know I can't draw. Like it would be shameful if you saw what I do for a stick figure. It's terrible. Uh, so like, how did you develop the talent that you have? Like, did you have any influencers in your life? 
Well, and such a well, and at such a I young think. age, because you're right. you started this what a few years ago, um, as far as the NFTs. But like, when did you become an artist and find that you had this skill? From what I've been told or remember, I've been drawing since three, like doodling outside more, and like. When I was at my grandparents house, like she always told me that I would like wake up at three in the morning, like very late at night and like say that I need to draw like I have to. So I had to wake up the whole house just for me to draw. And you know, I couldn't sleep if I didn't, which is kind of funny. Um, you know, then I, you know, I kept drawing, drawing. I never went to like art school because, you know, I wanted to find my own art style myself, like, you know, learn everything from my own side. So like that's like watching video tutorials, like buying books. I have like some books like you know like how to draw manga, portrait, and realistic, and I'm still learning how to find my own art style. I think I'm getting there. And like, I'd say what made me improve the most is just drawing every single day. And, like, and I've had challenges like where I had to draw every single day, which was really fun and learning. Like NFT teacups, for example, you know, I had to draw like the same teacup but, like in different styles every single day, which was really fun. And from that, I learned multiple styles that I now use in my life you know when i draw um honestly my influence i think it's just people around me you know like them telling me that i'm young and like you know that i can keep going and, do, and getting better like also i think my family because you know they are my biggest supporters and like they make me want to keep going and doing what i love so i'll say that that's that's, amazing. that's really cool and i think it's it's even cooler that we get to talk to you on international women's day and you truly are yeah the future of the world and nfts and so i just i think that's amazing and i just i love seeing young people get into this space and really make a difference like i just i can't wait to i i really hope that in one year three years five years down the road gen ft and i are hopefully still doing the nifty chicks and we can talk to you and see where you are in, you know, the future and, and what you've done and become. So that being said, I would, I would like to hear what your plans are. It seems like you're, you're working on new projects and and new things. So what are your plans for the future? Well, um, my plan for the future, you know, like what I want to become, I'd say I'm really like juggling between, fashion designer and a like, character designing like for movies and games. Like I find that really fun. And like now, like I'm doing junk couture, which is making a dress or fashion out of trash. And oh. the condition soon, I'm working on my dress right now. And I'm finding it really fun. Like, you know, it's really creative. Like just creating things out of trash is just so fun. Just the materials are better than just usual fabric. And it's like really creative, you know, you can make literally anything on your dress, which is which I love about it. Um, for Elvin, well, we are one of the Genesis projects that are integrated with the upcoming platform. So people who hold an Elvin will be able to stake their pieces, pieces in NFT battles and earn Zudao tokens and die from them, which I think is really cool. Um, Elvin is also one of the partners with the new exchange.io since launch. So all of the holders will receive the additional tokens during the airdrop when the platform launches. So that's what's next for Elvin. What's next for me, I can't really predict because, you know, the future changes, NFTs and social media will develop. So I might find new hobbies and you know, interests from that. But, you know, I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing and see what I can improve on next. That's amazing. Oh, and you're going to school full time because you're still in school. Like, I yep. I feel like you're yeah. living so many different lives. I, I have really no complaints about time management when I hear you. I mean, that's just incredible. Um, and actually, I remember the moment that Elvin sold out. And I believe it was that your mother picked you up from school and posted a little clip of, yeah. of she, you know, sharing the news that it sold out. Bring me back to that really moment. Tell me what that experience was like. So, like, I was in school, you know, doing my lesson, and, like, somebody comes in and tells that I'm going to be picked up. So, first, I was like, what's going on? Because I usually <laughs> don't get picked up from school early. So, I was like, did somebody die? What happened? Like, and I was just curious. So, like, my head was, like, all around. But then my mom tells me, like, 
just picks you up for no reason. I didn't believe her because I was a bit random. But then she's like, that my Elven project sold. And like, I was like shocked. I didn't know what to say. I was like, what? And I was like stuck in the moment. I didn't know what to say, how to re respond. But I was really happy and emotional too, because you know, it's my first big project and like my second one that I've ever done. And 6,000 to me at that time was like a lot. So I didn't really expect it to sell out like in four days, but it did, which was really amazing to me. And to see how people like were invested in my project and that made me really happy how people seen my art and myself, you know? So I was excited, kind of scared, you know, like, what do I do next? And like, it makes emotion basically, you know? But yeah, I love that moment. Amazing. I'm so glad she captured that on video too. You know, one of the things that we are doing on the Nifty Chicks is really highlighting women specifically in this space. And, um, you know, you being the next generation of women who are stepping into this space, like, I want to hear from you. Uh, do you have any advice that you would give other female, either NFT artists or maybe project leaders um, who are just getting into the space or maybe thinking about getting into the space? Well, what I would say most of the time is like never stop what you're doing because like, you know, if you keep doing what you're doing and improving every single day, it'll get better eventually, you'll, you'll gain more attention, like you know, it'll be worth it by the end. Like like if you give up, you never know what's gonna be next for you, you know? So like if you like never stop, like keep improving, like yes, there will be people who judge you, but they're just like a little challenge that you need to overcome to become a better version of yourself, you know, like being confident, fearless, and like looking forward to what's next for yourself. So I'll say that, yeah. I love that. I have I have another question for you. What medium are you using to create the Elvens? I mostly used digital apps. Like first, I used iArtbook. It's my first ever app. I used it for NFT cups and Elven. But after Elven finished, after a little while, I explored with Procreate because it's like a very high level version of iArtbook and it's like for more pros, I'd say. So I wanted to test that, see how it comes. First, I was like, I don't like it because it was like very hard to use and all the manuals and instructions and the still like what bugs me about it is like the blending tool. It like blends too much. It's like very hard, but I had to overcome that, like find a way how to not blend too much. So like, yeah, I'm now exploring different mediums. Like I'm still trying to paint in real life and like um, combining both mediums. For example, what I did last time I drew a sketch on paper in real life, took a picture of it and put it into my art book and then sketched on top and made a piece digitally. So that was easier, you know, because so I can sketch in real life easier to see for myself and then draw it online, which was, I think, really cool and like very new for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, I don't have any other questions. Do you, Jen FT? No, I mean, you were just so amazing and you have so much potential. You're going to go far. And like Minty Sel said, Sel said, we want to have you back on the show a year, two years, three years, five years down the road. Because I, I, I think you are just unstoppable. I'd love to be here. Yeah. I'd love to. Amazing. Well, I just want to I want to finish this with just again saying happy International Women's Day. I think it's really cool that we get to talk to you on this day considering, you know, we are, you know, oceans apart from each other and, you know, totally different time frames. And it's just astonishing to me how close or how much smaller the world has become thanks to the internet and technology. So it's very cool. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you. And international days to you too. And I'd love to be here. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Jen FT, what did you think about that interview with Yasmin? I mean, she is so incredible. I don't know where I was at 13, but I don't think I was half the human that she is. I agree. I, I know I wasn't. And I just, I love the fact that you can literally give someone like an iPad with a pencil and they can create like anything in the world and then turn around and, you know, sell it online. No, it's just no, amazing. Just don't give me that iPad and pencil because I can't make anything. Yeah, I can't draw, not, I can't paint. Me either. My, me my either. artistic skills lie with music and that's about it. I can't, right. I can't draw. Yeah. 
So I just want to remind everybody to be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified anytime we have a new episode go live. And also be sure to follow us on other social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook at the Nifty Chicks. That's the Nifty N I F T Y Chicks C H I C K S. That's right. And as always, thank you for listening. Happy, happy, happy International Women's Day. And invest in yourself. You are worth it. Chicks podcasts are not providing investment advice and are not taking listeners and readers' personal circumstances into consideration when discussing investments in cryptocurrencies or NFTs. The Nifty Chicks is not registered to provide investment advice. All the opinions of the hosts, guests, and or sponsors of the show are their own and are for information and entertainment purposes only. Do your own due diligence and research. Neither Jenna Cazadoy nor Aaron Sell are financial advisors. We are sharing our journey with you as we learn more about this crazy little phenomenon called NFTs. We make no recommendations. We only share with you what we are learning and what we are considering investing in. You must research any financial investment on your own. Just know that we will always strive for radical transparency with any show associations. Happy minting.